this year I have presented this very important European Trial Mind Act, the results of which are quite exciting. Perhaps it's good to start by saying that um, breast cancer oncologists know that they are overtreating women with early breast cancer. And probably the reason for that is the fact that advanced breast cancer is an incurable disease by large. So we feel that we have a huge responsibility at the time we see women with early disease because we know that this is when we have a chance to cure them. And maybe it's because we are so anxious that we overtreat women. And overtreatment with chemotherapy is particularly worrisome. And it happens when um, the benefit that you can expect from prescribing chemotherapy is a 2 to 3% improvement in survival, a small benefit, which happens when the woman has a relatively good prognosis. And that is going, of course, to be counterbalanced by the risks of some of the severe toxicities of chemotherapy, like secondary cancers and congestive heart failure. For some women, of course, the benefit of chemotherapy will be much bigger. If it's up to 10%, then you are certainly willing to take some risk, but not if the benefit is small. And that is a problem that we wanted to address uh, back in 2004. And we became very excited when a new tool emerged to help us with treatment decision making. And this tool was the 70 gene signature discovered by a group of outstanding laboratory scientists at NKI in Amsterdam, led by Laura Van Adver. So this signature, which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, was really impressive to us because it appeared to really predict extremely well the women who would not relapse, who would do very well without chemotherapy, from the women who on the other side would have a much worse outcome. And we decided that we would work on this biomarker and try to validate it. And that's also another important concept. There are a lot of biomarkers published in the medical literature and very few are validated. What that means is that the clinicians really have very few biomarkers at their disposal to help them with treatment decision. So what we really did with MamaPrint was all the work that you need to do to validate a biomarker, starting with an independent validation of the work of the Amsterdam group. We did that. Uh, that was a very first concrete step forward. Then we also demonstrated the interlaboratory reproducibility of the signature. And then we really got excited and confident and we were convinced that the signature was going to outperform clinical criteria that we use routinely to decide whether we should give chemotherapy or not. And the hypothesis was this, that the signature would reduce the rate of chemotherapy prescription. So the trial is really unique. It's, uh, there is not another trial of this kind because it really confronts tumor biology and tumor anatomy. So we embarked then on this large trial, which recruited 6,693 women across nine European countries. That was between 2007 and 2011. Uh, in the middle of the, the study, we amended the protocol to also allow women with one to three positive notes to enter the trial. And that's because we were able, again, in an independent study to validate the signature in these women. And of course, after that, we had to wait uh, for mature results. And now that we have a median follow-up of about five years on these women, we are totally confident that our initial hypothesis has been verified. And what is important to know is that the primary statistical test in Mind Act focuses on one particular group of women who are considered high risk from a clinical point of view and low risk by the signature. 
So this group included about 50% of women with node positive disease. Many of the women, about 29%, had grade 3 tumors. And in these women, we could demonstrate that if we trust mamaprine, we don't give chemotherapy, the outcome at five years is really very good. So 95% of these women have not developed distant metastasis. And that is independently from whether they got chemotherapy or no chemotherapy. And that is the really important finding of the trial, because it means that if we are not going to use mamaprint, and I hope we will, in the many countries where it's not yet approved, that for the women who are clinical high risk, if it happens, and that's going to be the case in half of them, that the mamaprint test is good risk, we will no longer give chemo. So that's a 46% reduction in chemotherapy prescription. Very important progress. I can tell you, it, it is the story of treatment de-escalation and it's so difficult to demonstrate that de-escalation of treatment is completely safe in oncology. It's much easier to escalate, to add on the drugs, but of course then we overtreat a lot of patients and the cost to society of these expensive, complicated treatments is pretty significant and problematic. So I think these are very good news, but again, I want to stress the fact that this required a huge collaborative effort between clinicians, patient advocates, scientists, and it took us 12 years in total. But what is very exciting is that we have also a fantastic biobank and we are also going to be able to look at the full gene expression profile of these tumors, not only the 70 genes. In fact, we assayed 30,000 genes per tumor. And that is going to be a gold mine for future research in breast cancer. News are really very good for women in Europe because there are very few European countries in which uh, these prognostic gene signatures, whether mamaprint or other signatures, are reimbursed. In fact, mamaprint is currently uh, paid for in the Netherlands, Germany, and part of Spain, and that's it. In my country, Belgium, it is not. Oncotype DX um, is currently reimbursed under certain conditions in the UK. But you can see that in many European countries, none of these tests can be prescribed free of charge. And that's going now to change, hopefully, with the results of MindTact.